fewer merge conflicts in storyboard files, which are basically the worst kind of merge conflicts you're gonna experience in an iOS app. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a merge conflict in a storyboard file, how to then try and resolve that merge conflict, and most importantly, how to avoid those merge conflicts in the first place. I've created a brand new single view application here that has the main.storyboard file, and I haven't made any changes to this application yet. This is just how it was set up. And I'm already using Git to track it. Uh, so if I check Git status, there's nothing to commit. Everything's already been committed. And just a quick note, you can use Git uh, and source control through Xcode itself uh, using the menu up here and there's the source control panel over here. Personally, I do not like to use these. I find they kind of get in my way and uh, sometimes Xcode just crashes while I'm trying to do something using these. So I always uh, do Git commands through terminal. If you want to use Xcode, that's fine, but I'm going to do everything related to Git and branching and merging uh, all through the terminal here. So like I said, there's nothing to commit here. Everything's good. Everything's been committed. I'm on the master branch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new branch. Uh, I'll just call this new feature. So on this branch, I'm gonna add a new UI view controller to the storyboard. And this is gonna be a common thing that you might do if on your feature branch, you're creating a brand new view controller, brand new screen that you need to segue to. Uh, so I'll just, uh, I'll put in a few random elements in here. Maybe there's a, a label, uh, maybe a button. And then I'll also just create a segue from the main view controller to this view controller, just to kind of simulate what it might really be like if you were creating a new view controller, just do a show segue. Uh, so here is that new view controller. And on my new feature branch, if I just type in git status, I can see that the main.storyboard file is the file that's been modified because I've added a new view controller. So I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, commit that file uh, add new view controller. And then I'm gonna go back to the master branch. And when we switch back to this branch, the main.storyboard should go back to its original state, right? That new view controller only exists in that new feature branch. But now on this branch, I might also make a change. I might add a new view controller. And usually I would never do anything on the master branch. I would create a new feature branch, but it's just simpler if I do this on the master branch for now. So uh, this will be different, right? It could even be in a different location. It's a different view controller, different feature. Uh, uh, maybe this one has, you know, like a, a scroll view in it, not a label and a button, whatever. Uh, and again, I'll create uh, another segue. Here we go, another show segue. So on one branch, I've created one view controller, and this could be, you know, maybe a, a setting screen. And on my other branch, I've created a different view controller. Uh, that could be, I don't know, a login screen or something else. So they're completely different, but they are in the same storyboard. So if I save this now and go back to the master branch, uh, I can see that the storyboard's been modified again. So I'm just gonna commit this, um, add a VC. And now what's gonna happen is I wanna merge that feature branch into the master branch. So that other view controller that I created on the other branch, I wanna bring that in to the master branch here. Uh, and to merge that, I can just get uh, merge, uh, forgotten the name of the branch, uh, new feature. So git merge new feature. And as soon as I do that, I get a conflict and this is gonna be expected. I modified the same file in both branches and that's led to this conflict here. So the merging can't continue uh, because this file right here, the main.storyboard has a conflict in it. And as soon as there's a conflict in a storyboard file, I can't actually open it up in Xcode anymore uh, because it, it's an invalid storyboard file now. So what I have to do is open this up in a different text editor and my text editor of choice is VS Code. You could use something like Atom or Brackets or Sublime, whatever. So I'm gonna open this up in VS Code and we're gonna see this file as a uh, XML file. And that's what a storyboard is, it's an XML file. So when we're using a storyboard file in Xcode, we get to have this visual representation, we get to drag and drop items and, and uh, drag blue lines to create segues and other things. Uh, but under the hood, it's just an XML file. So when we modify this in a different uh, text editor like VS Code, for example, we get to see it as this XML file. And this is how we have to resolve these merge conflicts. So scrolling through here, I can see the conflict. Uh, there's one here and there's one here. And now I'm gonna have to figure out how to resolve this conflict. 
And I will say, if you were doing this merge through Xcode, Xcode would actually allow you to see the storyboard in its XML format like this. But if you have another text editor, it's fine, it's no big deal. So usually when you have a conflict in a code file, you are gonna read through the different pieces of code, where they conflict, and uh, figure out how to resolve the conflict manually. In this XML file, I could read through all of the code here and figure out exactly how to make this work. Uh, but it's, it's kind of weird, it's unintuitive because I'm not used to seeing a storyboard like this. So although there are you know certain keywords like there's button, so I, I'm gonna guess that's a button and, and view controller, uh, it's definitely more difficult to wrap my head around than just when I was creating all of these in the storyboard in the visual representation in Xcode. And on top of that, I only had a really simple example, two basic view controllers, a couple of elements, that's all. Uh, in real life, you're going to have view controllers that have way more things going on, so you're going to have to read through a ton of this stuff, and it's just a little bit overwhelming. I don't really recommend doing it this way because it's, I think, too prone to error. It's too kind of difficult for us to do correctly, given that we're not used to actually coding a storyboard this way. So my technique for resolving an issue like this is to first uh, completely abort the merge. So git merge abort, and that just undoes the merge. So I'm now back on the master branch. Uh, if I go back to Xcode, I should be able to open up the storyboard. Yeah, and this is just the state of the storyboard on the master branch, right? Uh, so nothing has changed anymore. So now to merge the feature branch into the master branch, I'm actually first going to make a copy of the project. So I have my app, it's right here on my desktop. I'm just gonna create a copy of that. So I have my app and I have my app too. I'm still just looking at the original my app project in Xcode and in Terminal here, but I have a copy that I'm gonna use in a little bit. So now what I wanna do is try that merge again, knowing that I have that backup copy over there. So I'm gonna do that uh, git merge new feature. And again, we get that exact same conflict. Xcode is complaining. And if I go back to VS Code, here are all those issues. And what I wanna do is I have an option uh, to accept certain changes here, um, and you get these in most text editors now. What I wanna do is accept the incoming changes. What I wanna do is delete everything that I had on the master branch, basically, and only accept the new feature changes. So in VS Code, I can just click accept incoming changes, and that's gonna delete all of my changes from the, uh, from the master branch to do with the storyboard, and it's only gonna accept the changes coming in from the new feature branch. So accept incoming, do that twice. And now if I save this file, uh, just check in Xcode. There we go, let's re-click on it, there we go. So it will open up now, and this is the code from the new feature branch, not from the master branch. So I've lost all of my things from the master branch, but it's now working, uh, and if this was a larger merge, there'd be other code files, so I'd get all of the changes that I need, and just this conflict has been resolved in a way that I only have the new feature branch's uh, version of the code. But now what I'm gonna do is open up that copy. And my copy actually has the version of the code from the master branch without any of the merges going on. So here's my app that's currently being merged. It has the new feature code. And here's that copy that I created temporarily that has my master branch code. So what I can do in a storyboard is actually just click on the view controller, uh, copy that view controller, so command C, head back over to the other project where I'm actually working where I have the merge conflict, and I can just paste this in. And now I don't really have to look through any XML or anything. I have the changes that I needed from my feature branch. I now have the changes that I created in my master branch. I've just pasted that in. And if I look at this branch, I can still see, okay, there was a segue there. So maybe I'll just recreate that segue quickly. Uh, so I can just do that here. And now I've created a state that is the equivalent of actually merging those two branches into each other and it being successful without any conflicts. And I don't think this is a great solution, but in my experience, just doing it this way leads to much less error and much less confusion about what's going on. Like it's very obvious what I'm doing here. I'm just bringing in the view controller from the other branch and just kind of hooking it up as it needs to be hooked up. Uh, so at this point I'm done with my copy. That's all I needed it for. So I'm just gonna trash that. And uh, yeah, just close. Um, and now I have this, but I'm still in that uh, that merge state where I haven't actually finished the merge yet. So if I run git status, I'll see. Okay, we still have unmerged conflicts, uh, but we fixed all the conflicts in the storyboard. So now I'm just going to run a commit that is uh, fix conflicts. Okay get status, everything's clean, and this is now all fixed up. So that conflict has been resolved 
in this kind of roundabout way of copying the project and, and then copying the view controller back in. So these kind of conflicts are gonna happen anytime you've got multiple branches that are modifying the same storyboard file. And this can happen with multiple developers or a single developer just working on multiple features. Uh, so how do we just avoid this in the first place? Because this is, is not a nice thing to have to deal with. So the first technique is the technique for avoiding merge conflicts in any project, any file, anything. Uh, and that's to make smaller branches. So if you're working on huge features and you, you build up you know, thousands or tens of thousands of lines of code in a single branch and you add tons of different view controllers to your storyboard in a single branch while someone else is working on another branch and doing the exact same thing, you're gonna really, really, really likely end up with a ton of merge conflicts and it's gonna take you days to, to resolve all those conflicts. But if you're working on really small features, really tiny incremental features, and you're making a branch for each individual feature, then when it comes time to merging those branches together, merging them into master, you're gonna find that there's a lot less merge conflicts that you have to deal with. So try and work on smaller features, right? Break your big features down into a subset of smaller features and create branches based on those. And don't do the opposite of that, which is using a single branch to create a bunch of different features. The second technique, and this is one of my favorites to use in iOS development in general, even if I didn't experience merge conflicts, I just think it's a really nice way of organizing your view controllers in your storyboards. Uh, and that's just to use multiple storyboards. So usually I find people are using this main storyboard file to lay out their entire UI for their entire project. But how I like to do it is I actually use a different storyboard for each view controller. So right here I have three different view controllers. I would have at a minimum, three different storyboards because I even build my view controllers out of multiple view controllers so I'd have even more storyboards going on. But at a minimum, each view controller here should have its own storyboard so I should have three storyboards. Uh, and this is really easy to do. So I'll create uh, a new storyboard here. Let's see, storyboard. Um, and I'm not sure really what to call this view controller. It just has a, a scroll view on it. So uh, I'm just gonna call this, um, I don't know, other, other storyboard bad at naming. Uh, and now what I can do is, is similar to what I did before. So I'm gonna uh, cut this out of here, uh, just like edit cut, and I'm gonna paste this into the new storyboard. So now this main storyboard uh, doesn't contain that view controller anymore. It just has the original one and, and this one that I can get rid of later. But my new storyboard has this new view controller in it. Uh, the first thing I need to make sure I do so that nothing gets messed up is that I need to make this view controller, the initial view controller, just makes things a little bit easier. Now I can do all of my layout, all of my special fancy things, add new UI elements to this within this other storyboard that's not gonna get touched hopefully by another feature branch because it's only this feature working on this storyboard right now anyway. Uh, and when I need to let's say segue from this view controller to my other one, uh, all I have to do is add in a storyboard reference. So this storyboard reference is a way of accessing a storyboard from another storyboard. So if I just drag this in here, I can kind of treat it as if it were a view controller. I'm just gonna uh, drag to create a segue from this view controller to the storyboard. Let's make it a show segue. And instead of it being laid out this way where yeah, this view controller is gonna present this view controller, I'm saying this view controller is gonna present this storyboard, which is actually just this view controller. And uh, for this to work, I would have to say that this storyboard references my other storyboard. Uh, and that's it. So you can do this as much as you want. There's no limitation on how many references you can have. And there's no limitation on how many storyboards you can have. Uh, and if you start to do this, you're gonna find that it's much more modular, uh, easier to refactor, because you're separating out your code into different files. You're now separating out your view controllers and UI elements into different files. And it leads to fewer merge conflicts in storyboard files, which are basically the worst kind of merge conflicts you're gonna experience in an iOS app. We've looked at how to create, how to resolve, and how to avoid merge conflicts in a storyboard file. And that's where I'm gonna leave it for this video, but stay tuned for more videos on iOS development.